Welcome everyone uh, to the Sabbath service today, uh, the family, uh, and I appreciate you guys all being here today. I'm really excited for this message. Like I'm excited for virtually every message, well, not virtually every message, <laughs> um, because you know God is doing a work in us. He's doing an amazing work in all of us. Um, you may not see it, because I know for some, for a long time you didn't see exactly what He was doing um, for us or in us, but. He obviously has been doing a work in us and doing a work in you in different ways. You know, you've been touching people's lives. We've all been touching people's lives in different ways. God has all given us our own, you know, amount of salt that we needed to go plant and, 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 and spread out. And he gave us all different types of lights and some lights are brighter than others. And, but we all had light, you know, and we've been making impact. Whether we've been making direct impact or not, we've been making impact. And so... Um, God wants to share something with us today because I didn't know, again, like always, I don't know what to teach. Um, I don't plan any messages at all. And so God woke me up um, this morning and said, okay, this is what you're teaching. I said, amen. And that's what I'm going to share with you. So I want to start off with something that he showed me and told me to put up here. This is a little message, um, which is deep convictions. The Bible is the final answer. Um, John 17, 17, say to comply them by truth, your word is truth. That's our slogan. That's a little banner. If you guys want to copy that banner, I'll give it to you. If you want the logo, you can use it for whatever you want. But this was something that John F. Kennedy said. He said, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is that good men and women do nothing. Yeah. And God wanted me to share that message with us today. That's kind of the overriding theme of this message is that, you know, the only way Satan gets up, you know, triumph is for good men and women to do nothing. But Jesus is not going to allow that to happen. You know, he, he's about to make some impact in a, in a major way. So we're going to go through some things today. And I want to show you um, what he's done for us and, and share with us. And uh, before I do, before I go through the scripture, I want to kind of share with you a little bit about what happened in the last few, few days. Um, Two days ago, two or three days ago, that woke me up at three in the morning. He likes to do that because when I'm sleepy, he likes to wake me up. <laughs> I can get asleep. I hop out of bed and I have to now go do something. So it's at three thirty in the morning. I, I'm up and I'm like, "Can't you tell me in the morning?" He's like, "Nope, it has to be right now because it's too noisy in the daytime. You got kids, and family, and work and stuff you're thinking about. It needs to be right now." So I was like, "Okay, fine." So we I went downstairs and I'm talking to God. In my mind and in my out loud, and God starts sharing with me you know, what He's doing and why He's doing it, and He started sharing with me this lesson, kind of today. And I didn't realize it was going to be the lesson until after I finished preparing it. But He He showed me that He's coming, and He's coming soon, about as soon as we think He is. <laughs> as soon as, and, and I I can't say He's coming on this piece of trumpet. I can't say that. But what I can show you is the message he gave me today. And that's all I can say. I can't tell you he's coming to this piece because we've been seeing that for seven years. Uh, but all the signs that he's been showing us are all here. Um, the Mark of the Beast sign is all here. We've done lessons on that. Um, there's nothing that happens before the Mark of the Beast kicks in next. Uh, the cryptocurrency and God, all, all the stuff he's been putting in my life is showing all the signs are here. Um, I don't know of any other signs left. I can't find any in scripture, and I can't find any even in the world that needs to happen before Jesus comes to give a bride. So he's been showing me that, and he told me the scripture, but but he shared something just now when we were singing that touched me in a way that um, that just is just so intimate because it just showed this to me. And I'm going to share it with all of you because he just showed it as I'm sitting here. I wrote notes on my paper. And it was something Jane and I were talking about the other day. We were talking about how the Lord does things two or three times in the scriptures. So it's always done and then it's fulfilled. Done and fulfilled. Done and fulfilled. The New Testament was fulfilling the feast day from the Old Testament, right? Jesus came and fulfilled them. And all the things in the Old Testament are fulfilled in the New Testament. So just now, as I was looking at this, you know, God said, I'm calling my disciples. I'm calling my disciples. You're going to see this in scriptures. And so. He said, I'm calling my disciples to go preach the good news. Kind of like when Jesus was, came to come preach the good news, right? And I was thinking about it. He said, Stephen, your timeline. He said, look at your timeline. 
And so I'm thinking about my timeline of when God revealed this to us. God revealed this to us in about February or so, January, when we went to, um, to Arizona in December. So in December of 2010 is when we went to Arizona to get this award and we got, it was humiliating or all kinds of stuff. But that's when God started sharing with us about the Sabbath day. And we were at a coffee shop and talking about the Sabbath and it didn't make any sense to us. And then we had to go to Vegas for an event. And that was right as we started studying the Sabbath day, started understanding it, understanding what it's all about. And that was, an eight, that was around April, July, March or April, around that time. And we went down there, and then that was right before Passover. And right before Passover is when we first honored our first Passover. We didn't know Passover meant. We just didn't honor Easter. We knew that. I mean, it didn't make any sense. So I stopped honoring Easter. And then Passover came that year. And then from that point on, it's been seven years to right now. Right now is literally seven years from the time God started showing it to us before Passover. And then Passover came. And then he you know, showed us all the stuff seven years later, right? So he tells me, look at this timeline. And I'm thinking about it because that is the exact same timeline as Jesus. Jesus came to start preaching the message right before Passover. He started preaching the kingdom of God is near. And we're going to look at that in scripture. And then Passover came. He died and fulfilled Passover. And then he fulfilled Feast of Unleavened Bread. Then he fulfilled Feast of First Fruit. He rose from the dead. And then he fulfilled Pentecost, which was the Holy Spirit coming down. And then it went blank because there was no more feast days though. And we're about to fulfill the next feast day, which is the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets is filled in our life now, not back in the disciple life. And in the exact same time frame God shared with us seven years ago was right before Passover. Passover came and started honoring him. He started learning this message, started learning about the covenant. Now he's brought the covenant into fruition. This year is the first year out of all the seven years God started talk, showing us this message before Passover. Because every other time, he would talk about the Feast of Trumpets right before the Feast of Trumpets, right? But this year, for some reason, it was before Passover. And I didn't know why until just now when God was it. We are on the exact same timeline as when Jesus started preaching the kingdom of God. Exactly the same timeline. And that's why I was sitting here singing the song. I was like, wow. Okay. So I said, okay, amen. Uh, so let's go through the scriptures and let's look at the Bible so we can see what the scripture says for us. Because this message is for us. This message is for you that are here. Because God told me, send out the message to everybody. Send it to all of them. Invite them all. And the few that are chosen will be here for the message. And you are, who are here are here for the message. So let's go through it. We're going to read 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. First Timothy 4. It says, start in verse 1 through 5. I think this was the message we left off with, with last week. You can't see it. Let me, let me make it a little bigger. Hold on. Uh, there you go. So you, you might need to get your Bible if that's the case. I don't know. I don't know, you know, technology is starting to, to weird up on me, weird up on a brother. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on here, but um, let me see if I can read it. Huh? Yeah, hold on one second. Let me see if I can fix it. Give me a second, you guys. Um, hold on. There is that. Can you guys see that on the screen? Can you see it now? Yeah, there you go. You can see it now. Your mom, you can see it here. Okay. Yeah, I'm, it's just scriptures. But we're not going to go through all these scriptures. By the way, everything I'm, I'm going through today, I'm going to send you. I'll send it to you in the email. Uh, we're not going through all these scriptures, but um, I just want to make sure you have it. You'll see why in a second. So 1 Timothy 4, starting at verse 1, it says, The Spirit clearly says that in the latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. 
Did you hear what I just said? Did you guys hear that? Redeeming spirits and things taught by angels. Yeah, the quick this said. It says in the latter time, which is today, mm -hmm. it says some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. That's pretty scary yeah. to think about. Yeah. It didn't say taught by man. Right. Because see, the disciples, even in our ministry, think about it. It's, we're not being taught by man. God showed us in scripture. And even people in our ministry right now sometimes might be following deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. You know, people are being led astray from the true Sabbath day. I had a conversation with a person yesterday. So I don't think tomorrow's the Sabbath. I'm thinking, well, why do you say that? And he said, well, because you know, the moon was not completely straight. It was 51% it was the day before. And I said, yeah, 29 and a half days, sometimes talk a little bit. But we've been honoring it. We saw the new moon. We went out and saw the new moon and all the stuff. We saw the new moon crystal there, and we honored it last week. Well, it's, it's, Pretty easy to follow it, it's not confusing. But something taught that person that today's not a Sabbath day, they're not here. It's, it's just weird how God is allowing this to happen. And there's deceiving spirits and things taught by demons to the people that are with the faith, because they're abandoning the faith. You understand? And I'm not saying any one particular person I'm talking about. I'm just saying, no, that was a conversation I had just yesterday about. About when God's Sabbath day. We all know when Sabbath day. It's easy. You count to seven. It's not like challenging to figure this out. But see, the seeming spirits are going to lead people away. It's like in seven scripture. And then it says, such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose conscience have been seared with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry in order for them to abstain from certain foods of which God created to receive with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. And that's us. We know the truth. For everything God created is good. Nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. Because it is consecrated by the word of God. If you point these things out to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus. Nourished on the truth of the faith and of the good teaching you have followed. Nothing, having nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales, rather train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godless, godliness has value for all things, holding the promise for both the present life and the life to come. This is a trustworthy saving that deserves full acceptance. This is why we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. And actually, you know, it's interesting. God is so amazing because um, that wasn't actually the scripture I was supposed to be reading right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that scripture got in that message. But, but I know, but it's just amazing because that was not even close to the scripture I was thinking that it was. And I'm going to look and see if, if God changed the scripture all of a sudden. Because that was not in my message. <laughs> but it fit perfectly of what God wanted us to hear right now. And so, amen. But that is absolutely what's happening today. And we got to realize that there's deceiving spirits that are messing up the consciences of, of people with a hot iron. We gotta be careful of this, you guys. You gotta be very, very careful. And it says if you point things out, things out to the brothers and sisters, you'll be a good minister of Christ Jesus. And that's one thing that we need to do, and we're gonna start doing this. We need to start pointing these things out. Because that's what's considered a good minister of Christ Jesus. By pointing them out. Not just by knowing it and not saying anything. By pointing it out. And that's what we're going to be doing. And that's one of the things God has put on our heart to do. Is to go share this message. Um, so, you know, to get into some of the things that God has shared with us to do. is For me and, and Jamie, 
um, and my mom and, and Matt and Jaden and Maddox. Um, one of the things that God put on our heart or put on my heart was I wrote up his note and he told us that we needed to go and talk to our old church and go present the good news to them um, and share the message about that Jesus is coming and give them one last shot because the old, our old church, our disciples, um, they've been baptized for the forgiveness of their sin. They know that crystal clear, they're deceived um, like nobody's business, but you're gonna see in a minute that God showed me where they are in the scriptures. And so God said, now it's time, you need to go out and talk to your old church and, and go to these services and start sharing with the ministers, you know, one at a time, because it's been seven years and the ones that persecuted back then are no longer there. <clears throat> They're no longer around. So there's a whole new batch of people that God wants us to go share this message with. But I think he's also sharing this with you because you all have salt that's been in your life. You know, you all have different walks that you've come with that God has brought you to this point. And like John, you know your background and, and the church that you used to go to. God may be calling you. And this is for you to wrestle through in your heart as you get this message, of, uh, to share this message with the people that were around you. You know, you were around a group of people that believed in the Sabbath day. They believed in God's word. You know, they were just deceived as well, just like the people that believed in baptism, they were deceived. And Deborah, you know, you were going to a Baptist church. You know, and they believe in baptism. That's why they're called Baptist church. They understand it. And, you know, a lot of them are Israelites. And, you know, maybe God's calling you, Deborah, to go and start sharing with some of those ministers and people uh, the truth. And, and you know, <laughs> it's funny to fill up. You, you know, you've had a hard life, probably a harder life than all of us. You know, you grew up in, in orphanages and, and not orphanages, what the orphanages or foster care and stuff like that. And maybe God's telling you to go talk to the poor and the, and the nonprofit organizations and, and widows. And I don't know, but you've had a, you have a testimony. We all have a testimony that they're dated with kids and teens. And, you know, she has a testimony. Mom, with you know, seniors and people that of age that, that need to hear this message. You know, and, and we all and mom with homeschool with and women and, and biblical women and, and with need to ministers and you know what I mean? We and if you look at that, you're gonna see that in scripture here that God's calling us to go and teach this message to the people that are open. Now, everyone's not going to hear this message. We already know it's a very narrow road, and most people won't find it. We know it's a very um, wide road that leads to destruction. We know that. But that's not our problem. Our job is to go share the message with intent to make disciples. Some of them may need to get baptized. Some of them may already understand baptism or forgiveness of sin. They just need to honor the commandments and the holy days and Sabbath day. Because this is the exact same thing Jesus did with the Israelites and the disciples and the Jews and the Gentiles in the, in the Bible when he started his ministry. He started preaching the good news, the kingdom of heaven is near. And it was near, but that was the beginning of his ministry. We are the end of preaching the kingdom of God. And the next feast that needs to be fulfilled is the Feast of Trumpets. Jesus didn't fulfill that on his first time. He's going to fulfill it. And he's bringing us to lead that charge. Because if not us, then who will? And we have to take that responsibility. We have to take this as a real responsibility. This is not the time to go live our life and have fun and drink and be merry. Even though it will be fun and we will eat and drink and be merry. <laughs> but that's not the call of the hour call the hour is to go and do what God shows us, tells us to do. And so I, I, I wanted to show you the scriptures that God showed me the other day so you can see the same thing. And then I'm going to send them all to you so you can have them and pray about them for your, you know, for your walk. Let's go to Revelation. Revelation 1. Revelation 1. This is where it started. God woke me up. The first thing he said was, read Revelation 1. It says, the revelation of Christ, of Jesus Christ, what God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. 
He made it known by sending an angel to a servant John, who testifies everything he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Two things, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Um, I did a whole Bible study on the 10 lost, the 10 silver coins, and we realized that the word of God, it's not talking about the entire Bible. It's talking about the commandments and more even specific, excuse me, it's talking about the Sabbath day. And we've done the Bible study on how Satan goes after those who have the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes. Actually, in another translation, it says the commandments mm -hmm. and the testimony of Jesus Christ. You know, that's a good point. Let's look at that really quick, just to clarify that, because I didn't know that. So let's look at it, because it's very important to understand what we're talking about, because most people don't. And, you know, you've seen me go from translation to translation. And by the way, as I'm going through this, if any of you online, you can unmute yourself if you have a question about what we're going through. Please try to keep the topics to what we're on, because this is a conversation. So if you have a question, try to keep it here. Don't ramble off about something else, because that'll take us off track for this particular message. I think it's New King James Version. That's New King James. Okay, there's New King James. What does it say here? It says the same thing. Oh, it says the same thing? Okay. Yeah, you can they can talk. Okay, so it says here, <clears throat> I'll just go back. Bottom line is um, you can look it up for yourself. But the, the Satan is gonna go after those who hold the king hold the commandments and the testimony of Jesus. That's what it says in Revelation 12, 9 and Revelation 14, 9, I think it is. So that's who Satan's gonna go after. But it says it right here. It says, Blessed the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. Mm -hmm. And blessed are those who hear it and take heart to what is written because the time is mm -hmm. So this is very important. This is what God showed me is that not only are we supposed to read what we're about to read, we, it says that blessed are those who hear it and take heart to what is written. What does it mean to take heart? Take to heart and actually do what it says. That's what it means. And it's the reason why is because of the time is here. You understand? So we are in this time with those scriptures. Say, let's keep reading. Verse 4, it says, To the seven churches in the province of Asia. So I was like, yeah, why do you have to read the churches in Asia? Isn't that later? But you're going to see this is right now. It says, Grace and peace to you from he who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the rulers of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. I'm reading this in a, in a very slow way, and I want you to read this and take heart that he's talking specifically to you, to you watching this video right now. Mm -hmm. That's why this message is not for the entire world. This message is for the people that he's called to hear this message. Yeah. This message is for you specifically. So when you're reading this, don't just read it as you're reading it in, in the old day. This is today. This is the book of Revelation. This is right now. We're living it. In, lit, in real time, right now. Right. So I want you to read this as if he's talking specifically to you right now. Look what it says. Look, he is coming with the clouds. What day is that? The Feast of Trumpets. We know that. And every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. Well, that's, we know that's the Feast of Trumpets. There's a couple of Feast of Trumpets. One of them is when he comes to get the bride. Every eye doesn't see him then. When does that happen? When he comes back, right, with the angels, with the, the kingdom of God, and with the disciples. We know that. It says, even those who pierce him, because everybody won't be raised. It says, and all people on the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. If you read, we're going to read through all the churches just so you know. 
and you'll see where you fit in. What I want you to look at, because God was showing me these churches, and he was showing me where we are in these churches, and he also showed me where our old church is in this, this, these churches, and he also showed me other churches in these churches. But there was a few that I couldn't pick, I couldn't pick out. But maybe you can because you all have lived a different walk. And so God told me to show this to you so you can see what he showed me, and then you can see if the, the congregation or the people you know or the people you fellowship with fit into one of these groups. Because I don't know. I know the one that he shared up with us. So let's keep reading. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and the kingdom and the patient endurance, that our Lord, our, ours in Jesus was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said, write on the scroll which you see and send it to the seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned to see the seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs on his head was like white, uh, white like wool, and white like snow, as snow. And his eyes were a blaze fire, blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in the furnace, and his voice was like that of the sound of rushing water. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its When I saw him, I fell to his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and now look. I'm alive forever and ever. I hold the keys of death and of hate. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. So, right? He says, Write what you've seen, what is now, and what is taking place. So that's what you're going to see here. This is all three of them. The book of Revelation is all three. What's now? What will happen later? And what will take place? Oh, what you have seen, what is now, what will take place later. That's what it says. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. Here it is. The seven stars are the angels of the churches. And the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So now we know what the angels are, and we know what the lampstands are. Very simple to understand. Let's keep reading. Revelation 2. The church in Ephesus. To the angel in the church of Ephesus write, These are the words of him who will hold the seven stars in his right hand, and walk among the golden seven the golden lampstands. Every time it says at the beginning, it talks about the angels and Jesus. The angels and Jesus. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles, but are not, and found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name, and have not grown weary. So that's the first quality of this particular church. Now remember, a church, biblically speaking, has to be filled with baptized disciples. They must be baptized disciples, not a building filled with them, but a church, biblically speaking, are baptized for the forgiveness of sins disciples. So that's very important. So this is not talking about that, that building over there down the street that prays Jesus in their heart. That's not what it's talking about. It's not talking about that big group of people, 40,000 people out there that you know, see this TV show and this guy's talking about how much money they not talking about that. They don't believe in baptism. Now, there might be one person in there that has been baptized 
the forgiveness of the sin. So the Bible is talking about that person because that person is considered the church. Very important to, to grasp this concept. The church are people. It's not a group. You understand? It's not a facility. Very important to get that. Okay? So when you're looking at this, I want you to look at what group of people could this be talking about? So here it says, um, you have persevered and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. So this is somebody that's done or something. I don't know who that is, but look what it says. Yet I hold this against you. Everyone is going to be holding things against people. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. So let me tell you what this, what this was so intriguing to me. We know what the definition of loving God is. Is what? Obedience to the commandments. Obedience to the commandments. So if obedience to the commandments is what the love is loving first. So, so this group obedient, was obedience to the commandments at one point, and they lost that obedience to the commandments. And it says, consider how far you fall. So as you're looking at this group, you need to think, well, who could this possibly be that has a, you know, you know, Tars and who hates sin, who calls out apostles, who, you know, endures hardship for a name and haven't grown weary, but they fall away from honoring the commandments. I don't know who that could be. That could be the Israelites. That could be the Baptist church. I don't know. We don't know. But look what it says. Right after that, it says, repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place, meaning you will not be a church any longer. That's what that's saying. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolotian, Nicolotian, Nicolodians, and I, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Look what it says. The one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. So this is somebody, because it says the one who is victorious. It's not saying the, the church that is, that is victorious. The one. So what this is showing us is that, you know, some of these people are going to repent. Some are going to repent. And they are going to be able to be part of the true life, as it says. So it's very important to understand that this particular group that God is talking to, there's going to be some people in there that are going to repent. Hear the message when you go share it with them and say, I want, I want to be obedient. So it's going to say. Make sense? So you got to think through who that church is. I don't know who that is. But, you know, it sounded like someone that was honoring the commandments at one point and then stopped honoring them because that's what loving God is. Let's look at the next one, the church in Shemirna. To the angel of the church in Shemirna, right? These are the words of him who was first and last, who died and came to life again. That's Jesus, of course. I know your affliction and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you're about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you your life as your victor's crown. This is very important to understand who this church is. Now, I don't know. I'm just speculating based on what I'm reading. But this is a group of people, one, that they've been afflicted. We know in Deuteronomy 28 who's been afflicted, and they're poor. They're poor physically. So this is people that are afflicted by God or afflicted, and they're poor. I believe these are the true Israelites out there in the scripture. And because it says, yet you are rich. I know about the slander who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. These people are the ones that stole in the identity of the true Israelites. And then in verse 10 it says, do not be afraid of what you're about to suffer. 
which is telling you they're going to suffer. And it tells you that the devil, which is the people that call themselves Jews, will put some of them in prison to test them. Now, we know that there's prison camps all around the United States. We know about FEMA camps. We know that that's coming. When the mark of the beast is implemented, we know that people are going to go into captivity because of it. And these people are here. We believe these are the Israelites that are going to go through their final testing. Because look what it says, how long they're tested. It says putting you in prison, and they're going to be tested for 10 days. Where did that go? I just saw it. Where did it go? Oh, oh, you're here. Yeah. See, you're going to be tested for 10 days. This is the reason I believe these are the true Israelites out there that are going to be tested. Because from the Feast of Trumpets when the bride is gone, the only biblical 10-day period is from the Feast of Trumpets to the Day of Atonement. So the Day of Atonement is when the wedding party, and we believe the true Israelites, are going to be taken and go to meet with the Lord. That's why the Bible says they're still rich. And then it says, be faithful even to the point of death, which means some of them will have to die for their faith. These are not just the true Israelites. These are also the disciples around the world that have been baptized for the forgiveness of their sin because the Bible says there is no difference between Jew, Greek, slave, or free. We're all given the same spirit of grace. Very important. And then it says you'll get the life. So because of that, they'll be saved. And then it says, whoever has ears left to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. They're going to die the first time through the Great Tribulation. But the second death they won't. In other words, when God comes back down and opens the book, they'll be saved. So you need to think through, this may be that church that you need to go speak to. This may be some of the people that we need to speak to of who this is talking about. Let's go through the next church. To the angel of the church in Pergamum, right? These are the words of him who has the sharp, double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Well, that one's pretty easy to see what that one is. Let's, let's be specific on this. It says, verse 13, I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Well, what church has the throne of Satan in it? That's the Vatican. That's easy to see. <laughs> okay? And here's what most people don't know, and you may have seen this, but in 2013, you can look it up on YouTube. The Bible says, you know, I saw Satan come down like lightning. Most people don't know when this Pope just got inaugurated, right when the other Pope quit, that exact day, a bolt of lightning struck the top of the Vatican. Yeah. On that day. What's the probability of that? So it says, it says, look what it says in verse 9. It says, you did not renounce your faith in me, not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city where Satan lived. Well, what's the only church that's also a city? Vatican City. So we know this one. And so what that's telling you is that there are some Catholic people that have been baptized for the forgiveness of their sin that are part of that congregation that we maybe need to reach out to. If you have friends that know that or that are there, then that may be your church that you need to go share with. But let's keep reading it. Verse 14, it says, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you, that there are some of you who hold to teaching of Balaam. We know that. We know they worship Baal and all that. Who taught Balak in to entice the Israelites to sin so they ate food sacrificed to idols and committed sexual immorality. Now, we know what happened with the slave trade. We just watched the videos. You guys all got the video. If you didn't watch it, I'll send it to you again. You should watch the videos of what the Vatican did to the Israelites. They forced them to become what was called Christian or go into slavery. We just saw those videos last week. I sent them to you or in your email. So we know who this is. It says, likewise, you also have 
those who hold the teachings of the Nicolos, Nicolonian, Nicolonian. Repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. And we believe that's going to be the beast and the woman that rides it. Um, we'll go through a whole other study on that, but just so you understand who these people are. It says, whoever has ears up and hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna, which are, I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who received it. Look how specific he is. He's not saying the entire church is going to repent. What it says is to who is victorious. I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will also give that person, one person, or maybe a few people probably. I will give, it says, them a, that person a white stone with a new name written on it known only to the one who receives it. The one who receives it. Not the group that receives it. It's one. Very important to understand this. It's not a lot of people that are going to go, that are going to be the bride. It's going to be a few. But you may know those few. God may be lining those people up for you to go talk to them about this message. It's you. It can't just be me. It's all of us. We've all been given this knowledge. Let's go to the next one. The next church. The church in Thyatira. To the angel of the church in Thyatira. These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire, whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love, your faith, your service, and your perseverance, that you are now doing more than you did at first. So this is some group that's zealous. They're doing more than they did first. They're bigger, they're stronger, they're, they're going after it. I don't know who that is. But it says, nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate a woman, Jezebel. Uh-huh. Who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of foods Sacrifice the idols. Now, I don't know who that is, but this is a, I don't know. I don't know what church that is, but it sounds like someone that may have been honoring the Sabbath day, may have been honoring the commandments, may have been baptized with forgiveness of sin. I don't know, John, that might be the church that you used to belong to. I don't know. You, you know better than I do. Look what it says. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering. No, actually, it says verse 21. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she's unwell. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely. Unless they repent of her ways, I will strike her children dead. Then all of the churches will know that I am he who searches the hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. So I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep, deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you except to hold on to what you have until I come. Wow, Satan's so-called deep teachings. Well, this is one thing I didn't know when I learned is that the, um, there's some churches out there like the... Um, the the different there's several different churches out there. I can't remember the names of them, but the these groups of people that understand all the so-called deep secrets, like the secret societies and all of that, that hold on to these deep secrets. And it says who that group is. So it says to the one who is victorious and does not and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. That one will rule with them an iron scepter, and I will dash them to pieces like father. Just as I have received authority from my father, I will also give that one the morning star. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the church. So you need to think through who that church may be, or who those people may be. 
So I don't know those. The next ones, I have a good understanding, a couple of them anyway. <clears throat> it says, to the church, to the angel of the church in Sardis write, these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I found your deeds unfinished inside of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold on to, hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know what time I will come to you. Wow. So it's going to come to like a thief. We know that on the Feast of Trumpets, going to come like a thief in the night, and they won't know the time or day. Look what it says. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. What does it mean to soil our clothes? It means white robes. You have a white robe, right? The bride has a white robe. They walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge the name before my father and his angels. Wherever his ear, let them hear the Spirit says to the churches. So these people are actually honoring the commandment. Honoring the holy day, honoring probably the Sabbath day correctly. I don't know who they are. They might be out there. We are at um, the Church of Philadelphia now. We've gone through all the other churches and you can kind of see those, but this one you should be really encouraged because this is us. And you'll see it pretty clear. To the church, angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the keys of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I've placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not. I will make they are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. So that should be very, very encouraging for you all. Because there's a few things it says here, so we can tell this is us easily. It says one, is that you have little strength, and that's us. You know, we have very little strength. Um, you know, there's not a lot of us, not strength in numbers, not strength financially, not strength in our health, not strength in any way. It says you, we've kept his word. We keep 100% of God's word. And we have not denied Jesus' name either. So we keep the commandments and we have not denied Jesus' name. And we're Israelites. That's why it says uh, those who claim to be Jews. You know, we're Israelites either by birth or grafted in. And I was telling James the other day that, you know, just before the Feast of Trumpets last year, you know, we had the number one guy in the world that's trying to make the New World Order, his grandson, in our house. And he acknowledged that we are the Israelites by his non saying anything when I was pointing it directly out to him. When I flat told him to his face that I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, and he is a Jew, not an Israelite. And he didn't say a single word. So all of this took place in the last 12 months. So it's very encouraging. And, and the cool part that I love, how he says, since you have kept my command to endure patient. And that's what we've done, you guys. We've endured. And that's what I was telling Jamie. I just felt like we've been enduring. You know, we haven't been thriving. We haven't been doing all this great work for God. We've been enduring patiently. And that's us. You know, it's been a tough time. For all of us, and I'm sure all of you as well. It says, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. That's the great tribulation, guys. That's what's coming, 
and it's coming soon. And I believe it, the, the bride is going to be going on the Feast of Trumpets. And right after that, the One World Currency is going to be here, um, the, the New World Order, and they're going to start trying to implement all that. And then God is going to tear the place apart. And then it says, I'm coming soon. See, look what it says right after that. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. So when you're watching this, you need to look at this as this is talking directly to you, not to us as a group. Because Satan's trying to get at you individually. He's trying to find a way to make your faith flat. Even the situation with my son, he's trying to get me distracted, trying to get our family distracted, trying to get Jamie off track, trying to get our minds off focus. But we're not, because we know Jesus is going to come and take care of addicts and, and, and save him, and be, he'll, be, he'll be fine. And even if he doesn't, we're still not going to be off track because Jesus, we know where he'll go. There's nothing's going to happen to him. Nothing's going to happen to Maddox. But the whole point is, we understand what worst case scenarios could happen in this world. And even with the worst case scenario, we're still going to endure patience. Because we trust. We have faith. That's what faith is. We have to look at what's the worst case scenario, and if that happens, we're still going to honor Jesus. So we just got to look at it from that perspective. Just be real. Right? So this is who we are, and this is who you need to be, is you need to endure patiently because he's going to take care of us. And then look what it says. I love verse 11 and 12. I am coming soon to hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will it be there. I will write them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I'll also write in them a new, my new name. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And that's you. That's you. That's us. That's this body. And I'm sure there may be more people around the world. I don't know. But we're all fitting in these churches somewhere. And based on the scripture, that's us. And it's interesting that the United States is the only place on the planet that has a Philadelphia. <laughs> isn't that interesting? And isn't it interesting that the Pope last year, the faith church, spoke in Philadelphia. That was his last stop when he did his message to the United Nations in Philadelphia. Isn't it interesting the eagles are from Philadelphia and one, and on the eagles, there were disciples, baptized disciples from the church that we used to attend actually was baptized, and that's the guy who won the game for them against the Patriots. Isn't that interesting? God has his own ways of, of doing stuff, and all the you know, rituals that were done through the Super Bowl, God still was glorified. You know, he used his servants. So that's this church. Now, the last church is the church in Laodicea. To the angels of the church in Laodicea write, these are the words of the amen, the faithful and the true witnesses, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I'm sorry, cold nor hot. I wish you were either, either one or the other. So because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich. I have acquired wealth. I do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy gold from me. Gold refined in the fire. So that you can become rich. And white clothes to wear. So you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put in your eyes so you can see. This was really, you know, eye-opening for me because as I'm writing this this week, as God told me to sit down and go through this, he said, this is ICOC. This is our old church. And let me show you what I mean, why I say that. Because as I'm reading this, a few things came to, 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 uh, to mind as a reading of the Church of Laodicea. One, it says they are rich. Well, you know, I was, at this time, at the beginning, I was thinking it might be Joel Osteen, 
But Joe Osteen's not that kind of disciple, or probably his group isn't because they don't believe in that. So it can't be him, it can't be Saddleback, it can't be, you know, churches that don't believe in baptism for forgiveness of sin. That doesn't make sense. Those are not churches. So it has to be a church that believes in baptism for forgiveness of sin, but they're lukewarm. But the Bible says they're also rich. So I was thinking, well, who could this possibly be? And I'm going to show you a website right now. Disciples Today. Let me see if I can find it. Disciplestoday.org. This is our old church, ICOC. Disciples Today. Um, this church, this is their, their ministry thing called Hope. But this is the church, church located. They are everywhere around the world. In every country, over 150 countries around the world. And back then, they weren't very rich. We didn't feel they were very rich. But today, it's changed dramatically. Because they understand baptism, but they are filthy rich. This website, when I went to um, this website here, I went to the, the Los Angeles church. Let me just show you here. Is you can pinpoint where you want to where you want to meet these people, and we went and I looked in this church here. And I looked over here in the United States. I looked at the LA church. I just wanted to show you this right here, LA church. This is just the LA church. There's hundreds of thousands of people in the church. See, Joel Osteen has forty thousand followers, but they're just followers. They just believe in him. These guys are committed disciples of Jesus. All have been baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. This website right here. I was looking at this website and I was like, good night, this thing is amazing. And I started going through the churches individually. And God said, okay, it's time to go talk to the churches. I mean, this website, they spend a lot of money on this website. They got apps and all, I mean, this thing is so modern. It is the best website I've ever seen for any type of group. I haven't seen a website better than this. So they're not rich maybe financially, but they're rich from the world standpoint. You know, they got all these, they got hundreds of thousands of people in 150 countries around the world. But the Bible calls them lukewarm. And here's why. Because there's sin running rampant in the church. They don't understand the commandments. They don't understand the holy day. They got baptism for forgiveness of sin down pat. But that's it. And so God says, Stephen, you need to go talk to the churches. So what we did is I, I sat down that day. And I made a list of every church in Southern California, and we're going to go starting this Sunday, church to church, service to service. And we're going to go in there, we're going to ask to speak to the minister and the pastor. And God put on my heart with all these scriptures of what we need to teach. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to go in and start teaching this message to the people that need to hear it. And we know for a fact, most of them aren't going to hear it. They're not going to want to hear it because it would change the entire dynamic of the entire church. But this has happened to them three or four times already. People have sent letters. And so you, so you can look at this website yourself. It, it, I mean, every church here, and I have an email list of every one of these ministers and every one of these churches, and I've been sending out emails to them for years. Almost no response. But God said, no, you need to go in person. You need to go talk to them in person. Because they know a disciple when they see one. This is one thing they won't be able to say. That me and my wife and my kids are not disciples and my mom. When we walk into that church and we're sitting there and we ask to speak to the ministers and they want to question us like they question people to find out how, they, how they're doing spiritually, they're going to know we're disciples. We can tell our story. We can tell how we got here. And then we can share the truth about the kingdom of God and what's going on with the people that are open here. The ones that don't want to hear it, we're going to do what the Bible says, which we're going to look at in the moment. So this is the church that you know God told us to go to, and look what it says. It says verse 19 it says, Those who I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am, standing at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens it, I will come and eat with that person and they with me. If you notice it doesn't say, you know, baptize or anything, they got it already. They already had that part now. It says, the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat with, down with my father 
on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So that's what the Lord's called me to do and my family is to start going to these congregations and sharing this message on their Sunday service. Amen. And that's what we're going to do. And we're starting this weekend. Um, we'll still have our Sabbath service, you know, you know, through online, but we can have it anywhere we are. All we need is a laptop. But we're going to have our Sabbath service and, you know, but we're going to be out sharing this message about the kingdom of God, just like Jesus did. So I just wanted to share that with you. Now, we just got a couple of scriptures left. So what should we do? So let's look and see what the Bible says we should do. Let's look at this. Let's look at Luke. 10. Luke 10, starting at verse 1 through 24, it says, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go. I am sending you out like a lamb among wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag of sandals. Do not greet anyone on the road. And that's what we're going to do. I asked God, will you send me? And he said, amen. That's what we're doing. And you know what? The harvest is plentiful. But the workers are very few. We're right here on this video. That's why this video, this particular one is for us. It's not for the world. It's for us. So take this at heart and start asking yourself, God, what do I need to do? Where do I need to go? It says, when you enter that house. Now, when I looked at that at first, I was thinking a house. No, it's the house of God. When you enter a house, the house of God is considered the house. When you enter a house, first say peace to that, this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eat, drink, whatever you, they give you. For the worker, it deserves the wages. Do not move around from house to house. Amen. So we're going to go do. We're going to go stay and find out where, who wants us to, to meet with them, and that's what we're going to do. And then when it's time to go, then we're going to go to the next one. And when it's here. Look what it says. When you enter that a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them. Look what he says to tell them. The kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcome, go to it, into its streets and say, even the dust in your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this. The kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of Sodom than for that town. And that's exactly what we're going to say. If someone doesn't want us to be there, if someone doesn't want to hear the message, we're going to say that exact sentence, word for word. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. If the miracles that were done before you, before you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in Tyre and Sidon and at the judgment than for you. And you, Cape Perium, Will you be lifted to the heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. Whoever listens to you, listen to what it said. This is key. This is key for you guys. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. Who rejects the, him who sent. So what that's telling you is that when you're out sharing your message with whoever God's putting in your place to, to share with, if they reject you, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting Jesus and God. Sorry. Everyone in our house is sick, including our and dog. Even our dog is getting sick right now. Oh, my God. I mean, Sorry, you're telling me, Satan, Satan's spirit right now is trying to, um, trying to, it, it's unbelievable right now, you guys. It's unbelievable. Even our dog is getting sick right now. <laughs> it's just we gotta kind of laugh at this, guys. This is a this, this is one of those messages that you know Satan does not want to come. I hope you can see this. You're seeing it in living color. 
You know, we can take our stuff to the hospital, dog run up over here. It's uh we're laughing we try to keep from crying to tell you the truth, but you know, Satan doesn't want this message to go out, guys. But it's going to go out. It's going to go out. It says, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, look what it says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions to overcome all the power and authority of your enemies. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirit submit to you, but rejoice is that your names are written in heaven. And that's what we need to be doing right now. We need to understand that Satan is here on this earth. He is, we know what he's doing, but rejoice that our names are written in heaven. So at that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit said, praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and reveal them to little children. Yes, Father, but what is what you pleased to do? What um, you were pleased to do? See, it was hidden from all these wise scholars and all these peace pastors and ministers, but it was given to us. It was given to you. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one who knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows who the Father is except the Son, and those who the Son chooses to reveal him. You see, no one knows Jesus except those who you reveal him to. And he's revealed him to you. Let's keep reading. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but did not see it. And hear what you hear, but did not hear it. See, so you got to understand how blessed you are to even be here listening to this message. I sent this message out to a lot of people in our ministry that's been in our ministry, have been a part of it. But God brought you here. I pray God only allow the people that need to be here to hear this message, that are willing to die for you, that are willing to stand for you, that are willing to do your will, be here today. And that's you. Now you're going to have to wrestle through this message and what you're willing to do for him. Because God's calling his people. So look at Matthew. We're almost done. Matthew 9. Matthew 9. Starting in verse 35. Matthew 9, starting in verse 35. It says, The workers are few. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues. Notice it doesn't say teaching in his synagogue because they're not his synagogue. Jesus didn't worship in a synagogue. Jesus taught in a synagogue. He went to their churches. He went to where the leaders and teachers of the law were, just like we got to do. We got to go to where the teachers of the law are. And guess who the teachers of the law are today? Pastors, ministers, preachers, evangelists, those people. He said he went to their synagogues proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When the crowd saw him, when he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out the workers into his harvest. And that's us. Yeah. And that's what we need to do, guys. So this message. Is, is what we need to teach. We need to be teaching the good news of the kingdom of heaven. Now, we're not going to go through any of these scriptures right now, but I'm going to show you that on the bottom of this half of this page are all the scriptures that God put on my heart to teach, what, what we need to be teaching people. Because, you know, I know, um, I know Gus, you had been asking me for years, can you lay out this plan? And I could have laid out the plan of how to make a disciple, but up to this point, God didn't give me what the plan was until this week of what we need to be teaching. Because I've been asking, God, what do I teach? What do I teach? What do I teach? And I looked in my notebook, and God had already given it to me. I didn't realize it. 
So it's all right here. And I'm going to send you these scriptures. And you need to look at these scriptures to learn them. You've heard them a thousand times in the last seven years. But you need to now learn them and take them and, and be a disciple and go and share this message in your farm. And you got to pray about it. you got to live by faith. This is going to take faith. It's going to take determination. It's going to take effort. It's not, it can't be passive. And so it just says, here's the things that we need to teach. I'm not going to go through the scriptures, but it says, we need to teach how to become a disciple. If someone's not a disciple, then you need to show them how to become a disciple. And we have the lesson on how to do that. But disciple is holy to Jesus' teaching, which is the Bible. So the scriptures are there. It says, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of their sins so they can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You need to be teaching that. If, if you're talking to people that don't understand that, you need to teach it to them. Because some of them might be deceived. So you need to teach that message. Loving the Lord is obedience to the commandments. And there's a whole bunch of scriptures here that show that loving the Lord is obedience to the commandments. And if people want to not go through the Great Tribulation, they got to obey the commandments. So this is a scripture that you want to share with them. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. And you know how the true Sabbath day works. So you need to show them that the scriptures are here. The Lord's calendar begins with the month of Aviv. That's Genesis 1.14. You need to just show it to them. That's when the Lord's month starts. That's next month. That's why God has inspired me to inspire all of you, including you, John, to be out here. If we have to pay for it ourselves. We'll find a way. You need to be here with the body. That week, if you need to. You know, we got three feast days that day Passover, unleavened bread, feast of weeks, uh, you know, feast of uh, first fruit. You know, and then after that, we go to the feast of weeks and do the feast of trumpets right after that. So if you can't make it, come out. But we want to have a big party. We want to have a, a thing and invite guests and friends so they can experience the Passover. And then the new moon celebration. It shows the scriptures that with the new moon celebration, and God narrowed it down so we don't have to go through the entire Bible. But there's a few scriptures that He said to look at, so you can show it to someone. Very easy, very simple. And God's job is to open their heart so it'd be easy to see. We don't need to go through all the 500 videos and all the stuff that God's created. I'm thanking God because no one would say we had to go through all that stuff. But He made it very simple: one sheet of paper, all the answers. And then the Lord's feast days, what the Lord's feast days are. And there's some scriptures on here about the holy feast days and just to be able to show people the covenant again. And then the feast of trumpets and what the bride of Christ is. And there's the scriptures there. That's it. That's the, that's the message that God wants us to teach. Because see, in the Bible, when he was teaching it right here, he didn't have to teach a lot of this because they were already honoring the Passover. They were already honoring the feast of unleavened bread. He just became flesh to fulfill it. But they were already honoring it. That's where they honored Passover. He just became the Passover lamb. He died. He was unleavened bread, and then he rose from first fruit. And then 40 days later, 50 days later, he gave the Holy Spirit, Pentecost. He fulfilled those feast days. And through us, he's going to fulfill the next one, which is the Feast of Trumpets when the bride is gone. Okay. So I pray that God, you guys, that you know, we'll take this to heart, and you'll you'll take this message. I'll send the scriptures over to you that are on this video, and I pray that you'll pray through it and and let's talk, um, and you know, help you help you, you know, do what God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. let's, let's send it off in prayer. Yes, and really quickly, um, we had talked about next week for the Sabbath, um, having uh, that's the Sabbath where we wanted to have it like a family Sabbath where you guys could maybe have someone over for you know, lunch or, you know, share scriptures with them, get to know someone, you know, have your own little Bible talk, nothing fancy, but just something for you guys in your own special way to have a holy convocation with someone. Um, and then the following week, which would be the fourth Sabbath of the month, um, we talked about having a park day that day um, in Irvine. Um, and so there's a park in Irvine. I'll send you guys the information. We'll still broadcast. Um, but, and I'll, I'll send out reminders for this stuff, but next week would be the day that we wouldn't be here live broadcasting. However, we would like to share, um, maybe the next day we could all somehow text each other and just let it, 
one another know how it went so that if you did have friends over or whatever, we could be praying for them. Um, so let's go ahead and close it up. Sure. Father God, we thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for um, the peace that you give each one of us in our hearts, Father, that, um, Father, just to be here on your Sabbath day, Father, to be here um, in honor of you, knowing that each one of us um, just long for your coming. Father, that we thank you for showing us um, who we are in Scripture. You know, just like John the Baptist prepared the way of your first coming, Father, we are preparing the way of your second. And, Father, that you have hand-selected each one of us and shown us your truth and the power of your word. And, Father, the deceptions in the world. And, Father, we pray that we will die for you and be willing to die for you and lay down our life. Father, please just pray. Um, I pray a specific prayer of our, our Maddox right now. I pray for wisdom and for understanding of what is going on with him. I pray for your healing spirit to come over him. Father, please allow us just to have peace during this time. And Father, I really thank you for the people who are here today. We love you and we lift up this time to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, guys. Appreciate you. We got to get Maddie to the hospital. Okay? Love you guys. We'll, we'll talk soon, okay? Bye, guys. Okay, bye bye, yeah. everybody. See you later. Bye, everybody. Come on, baby. Prayers go with you. Be safe. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.